everyone. Thank you for joining today. I know we have some folks still joining, but we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I do want to thank everyone for joining our next Experience Academy today. Um, we're going to have a really great topic today on some new Utah features, um, but before we get started, I want to go ahead and just open it up for introductions. Um, so I'm Ashley Snyder. I'm an outbound product manager here at ServiceNow. I've uh, been in the ServiceNow space for about six years as a customer and about a year at ServiceNow. And I'll go ahead and hand it off to Brad to introduce himself. Hey everybody, I am on the same team as Ashley, the outbound product management team here at ServiceNow. Uh, I've been developing on the platform for a while and excited to share what's new in Utah. Hello, everybody. My name is Maria Gabriello Choa Perez Wechter. I have been a ServiceNow developer for about five years now, and I just very recently joined Brad and Ashley's team um, on the outbound product manager uh, platform Web UX team. Awesome. And then I, Amanda is here in spirit today, uh, but she is also the director of our team as well. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started with some housekeeping before moving forward. Um, so we did save time at the end of the session for Q&A. Um, we will be answering Q&A along the way. So if you do have any questions, uh, please use the Q&A button uh, for Zoom and we'll get to it at the end um, or answer it via the chat. Um, so this presentation is going to be recorded and we are going to post it on the ServiceNow community a few days after the session. Um, so be on the lookout for that if you want to revisit it or share it out. Uh, and then you also will receive a, like a survey email from Live on ServiceNow about this session that's coming from our marketing team. So we do appreciate any feedback that you might have about our academy session um, or if you have feedback about other academies as well, you can use that link um, too. Uh, before I get started, uh, we probably will uh, mention maybe some roadmap items uh, as we go along. This session is mainly Utah content, so most of the things that we are going to be discussing already are in early availability. There are product documentation out about it. We may, you know, answer some Q&A and mention some forward-looking statements. Um, so if we do mention anything that's not in the Utah release, uh, please be advised that it is subject to change and don't make any purchasing decisions uh, based upon those statements. Awesome. So today's topic, uh, we're going to be talking about what is new in the Utah release for the next experience UI uh, and UI builder. So we've kind of chopped this up into two sections. The first section is going to be the next experience user interface. And then the second section is going to be uh, UI builder. Um, so that's how we're going to be presenting that today. Uh, so we're going to get started with the next experience user interface. And I'm going to hand it off to Maria Gabriella for the first two sections on theme builder and dark theme. Hello, everybody. So as of Utah, we've launched a new store app to offer customers to easily create new out of the box themes. Uh, theme Builder will allow you to manage, edit, and implement themes in an easy, efficient, and upgrade-safe way so you can reflect your company's brand. And we have a bunch of other content, an academy, and a creator toolbox session for more information on how Theme Builder works. Also, as part of the Utah release, we've extended dark mode to dashboards and more stuff. Uh, it is only available as a variant for the default Polaris theme, and we also have an article on the Next Experience uh, Center of Excellence to get more information on it. And I'll be posting the link in the chat. Awesome. Yeah, I know that a, a lot of um, customers and a lot of developers have been waiting for dark theme to kind of mature. Uh, as of San Diego, it was only available for those workspace experiences and, and things created with the Next Experience framework. Um, but now, like you can see on the slide, and as Mary Gabriella mentioned, we have expanded it. It's more full featured. Um, you know, you can use it on things such as dashboards, um, UI pages. Uh, I know like service catalog and, and even visual task boards was a big ask. So definitely go explore that and kind of see the changes that we've made throughout the different releases. So you know what to expect if you're on San Diego versus Tokyo versus Utah. Awesome. So um, I'm going to jump into the next set of content that um, some features that we've released in Utah. So the first one I'm really excited about, and it is the ability to organize favorites into different groups. 
Um, I know we've had the ability to favorite things for a long time um, with our previous user interface, you know, core UI or UI 16, um, but there really wasn't a, a great way to organize those favorites. You just had a big, long laundry list of favorites. I think there was some community uh, workarounds and stuff out there, but we really never released it as a, a platform feature. So in Utah, you can actually create favorite groups uh, and organize your favorites within those groups. Um, and I will do a demo of that in just a little bit, um, but I did want to mention that that ability is there and it's only available for the next experience user interface. So if you are using the previous user interface UI 16 or core UI, um, that feature isn't there. So that's a, another great reason if you're not already uh, to start using next experience UI if you want the ability to organize those favorites. The next one, um, this actually came from some feedback that we got in the San Diego release, uh, which is multi-menu filtering. So if you were on San Diego or Tokyo and you were using uh, Next Experience, you may have noticed that you had to filter in each of the menus individually. So if you were in the all menu and you were filtering, you wouldn't get results from your favorites and vice versa. Uh, and that was a feature that we had in the core UI and a lot of our customers really liked and wanted to use. So we did put it back into next experience as far as Utah. So if you are in like the all uh, menu and you start to do a filter, you'll see that your favorites items appears first uh, and vice versa. If you're in favorites, you'll see that all menu result. I do want to mention that history is not filtered by default. Um, we kind of kept that separate because there could be a lot of stuff in there. So um, history is not filtered by default and it will only show results in the history menu to kind of give you clarity on how that works and that's another thing i'll be demoing in just a second and then the next uh, feature i want to talk about is customizable in product notifications um so we do have the ability to do notifications in next experience and kind of give you that nice little toast banner at the top when a notification occurs uh, in previous releases, this was really only limited to workspace notifications, and those notifications were ones that um, maybe our product teams put out there. Let's say that you were in the CSM configurable workspace. They built some pre-built notifications in there, and those were the only ones that you really got. They weren't really um, customizable or configurable, but now in Utah, you can actually, as an admin, go in and create your own notifications and have them appear there. Um, so I'm going to do a demo where I basically show you how you can create a notification when a work note is updated on uh, an incident record. And then that notification will appear in the assigned to field. Um, so these are a really, uh, really great feature. If you do want those notifications to appear, you do want to notify um, folks in, in different fields that something's happened on the record. Uh, and these are able for you to configure in Utah release. And then the last thing I do want to mention um, is that guided tours and follow are now supported in Next Experience UI. So guided tours, um, you can run them on what we call classic environment forms and lists. Um, so all of your existing guided tours, you should be able to go ahead and run as well as your service portal tours. Um, you can create a custom tour on the Next Experience Unified Navigation header, and I have a community article um, on our product hub kind of walking you through how to do that, and we'll throw that link in at the end of this. Uh, I do want to mention that guided tours aren't supported on workspaces or other pages that were created with the UI framework yet. Uh, that is a roadmap item for us, so keep on the lookout for that. Uh, and then follow, um, that was another feature that wasn't supported as far as um, San Diego and Tokyo, where you could follow a record. Um, but we do have the follow button back in classic environment forms and lists. So if you click on follow and you're working in the classic environment and someone leaves a work note or a comment, you will get one of those toast banner notifications informing you that something has happened as far as comments and work notes on the record that you're following. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a short demo here of the next experience features um, before we head into UI builders. Let me just go ahead and switch my screens for just a moment. We did have a question while you're doing that, and okay. uh, it looks like the question is, it has history changed or is it still only showing the last 30 items? That's a good question. Let me go into history because we did make one more incremental change to that. So I will show that in the demo. Um, because history should show items now from uh, workspaces. 
So in the past, let's say you went into a record in a workspace, uh, that wouldn't appear in history. So that is there. As far as the length of history, I don't know if we made any changes to that, um, but we did make some changes to history in Utah. Um, so I do have my Utah instance up here. Um, let's go ahead and just get started. We'll get started with the favorites grouping. Um, so there's a couple of different ways that you can favorite um, here in Next Experience. So what I'm going to do first is create a group. I don't have any yet uh, with the Edit Your Favorites button. And you see here at the bottom, now we have a Create Custom Group button that's available. And once you click on that, uh, you can name what you, whatever you want in here. This is really for you to kind of organize your favorites. I'm going to call mine Group Management. I'm going to pretend that I'm an admin and I have some groups that I need to manage. Um, color, I don't think that does anything yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and click yellow, but I haven't seen it really uh, modify anything yet there. I'm gonna go ahead and save my edits to my custom group. And if I go back into favorites, I do see it here down at the bottom. Um, a couple of different things as far as favoriting. I'm gonna actually go into, uh, we're gonna go into the all menu here and look for groups. And you can see I have a lot of stuff down here, so I definitely want to make this a little bit more manageable. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to do is actually favorite here from the All menu. And you can see I have this kind of pop out that flies out, and I can actually now go into the location of where I want this favorite. And my custom group is there for me to select. So I can go ahead and just do it from here, which is great. And then if I go back into favorites, you can see that my groups is down here yet. And it looks like that yellow color is applying. So it's probably going to go ahead and apply it to whatever I put in here. And then another way we can go ahead and favorite and add it to our groups as well. It's like I can go into one of these group records and I can favorite from the contextual app hill up here at the top. And I get that same kind of pop out where I can now choose where I want this to go. I can put it in my group management groupings here. And then I should be able to see it and easily get to it um, from here. It looks like that yellow didn't apply. So my theory is incorrect, but you can see how I can go ahead and, and put that in there. Um, if you have existing favorites, you can go into the edit menu and drag and drop them from there. Um, but this is just a really great way that you can start kind of organizing those favorites that you have, especially if there are things that you get to very often um, and you just want to be able to easily um, see them within a group itself. So we have that available. Um, it's really exciting. Uh, the next thing I do want to uh, demo is the multi-menu favorite or filtering. So if I go into the all menu here, uh, I'm just going to type in like the word contacts and you can see that I do have a favorite for customer contacts and that appears at the top now. Uh, so a lot easier than having to go into the contact or the favorites menu and look for it itself. Um, if I do go into favorites and look for contacts, I do see it up here, but then also all results is here and we went ahead and collapsed it because we didn't want to take up all that screen real estate, but you can expand it and then kind of get those options as well. Um, another thing to mention is when you're filtering now, you're going to kind of see the filter term. If it matches, it's going to be more in bold. Um, so that's another thing that we enhance as well. Uh, and then as far as workspaces, um, if we do filter on the workspace menu, that is a little bit different. If you are typing in like the word workspace here, if you have a workspace favorited, you will see it here and favorites. But we did put everything that's in the workspace menu down here at the bottom. So if you are filtering all workspaces and not using the workspace menu, that's where you can expect to find those. And then I, like I mentioned for history, um, I have been working in the service operations workspace. You can see here, I've kind of gone into different records in the service operations workspace, and it is showing me that record here, so I can jump to it very easily. So that is a change that we made in Utah as far as tracking the, the history and the things that you've done in workspaces within your history. Uh, I do not have 30 days of history data, so I can't answer that question, but we can circle back around on it. Um, within the community post for this um, when we're ready. And then the last thing I want to mention is the customizable and product notifications. So let me go ahead and show you how that is set up. Um, I did do some pre-setup because I do want to have enough time for the other content that we have today. So if you go into all and you like type in the word trigger, uh, right now they're going to be located underneath workspace experience um, administration notification triggers. 
Uh, we are kind of reusing some modules here. Uh, I know that you know it may not make the most sense because we are applying it to next experience, but just be advised this is where this is located for now. I know we do have larger platform-wide efforts to kind of rework where notifications are at, so safe harbor on that, but just so you know, that's where they're located now. And here I can kind of see all of the workspace and next experience triggers that have been set up. And for this demo, I went ahead and signed a, uh, set up this incident work notes added assigned to notification. And what I did is I set it to trigger when a record changed. Um, I just left inserted checked and I definitely wanted updated checked. And I'm triggering this off of the incident table. And I only want this to occur when the work notes changes on the record. Um, I don't want it to occur when anything else happens. And then for who will receive, I want the assigned to uh, person to get the notification when a work note has been left um, on the incident record itself. Um, so this hasn't changed. This has been around um, for the workspace notifications, but what did change was what's here in this content um, section here at the bottom. Now we can set up uh, next experience content. So I've set this one up, but I will show you kind of what that looks like. If I hit new provider content, you're going to see kind of this interceptor here where I can choose what kind of notification this is. And I have the ability to select next experience from here. So let me go back into the one that I went ahead and set up. So I named it the same to kind of keep in line with, you know, what I named it so I know what it is. So incident work notes add and assign to. Um, it is a next experience notification. Uh, if you've worked in notifications before, this may look a little familiar. I have the ability to kind of type in what I want, and I can reuse fields and stuff from here. So I went ahead and just set this up for our demo um, just to tell the assigned to that there's a new work note that's been added and then king off the work notes field. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to go into service operations workspace, and I'm just going to leave a work note on an incident record. And I'm going to find one that is assigned to Beth Anglin. So let me see. Let me find one that's for her. There we go. This is a good one. Okay. And then I'm just going to leave a work note for her. And I do want to mention while I'm doing this, I'm demoing this in a workspace, it's not workspace specific. So it works if you're in a workspace or if you're on a classic environment form, uh, it'll work either way. I just am demoing this in, in a workspace for these purposes. And then I'm going to go ahead and impersonate Beth. So you can see when Beth logs in, um, I do have this notification bell here. I have been testing with her earlier, but I can see I have two notifications. Um, there's the one that I just added. I was testing earlier. So we can see everything that's been added today. So she does get that badge, letting her know how many unread notifications that she has. Um, one thing I did notice is if you open this, let's say that you're here in this landing page or on a dashboard, or you're working in a classic environment form, if you click here, it will open in the classic environment. Um, if you are working in a workspace and you happen to click that bell, it will go to the workspace. So I'm just going to go ahead and let that workspace load for a second and then go ahead and click on that. Um, so it is a nice feature. So if you are working in that workspace, it'll automatically open up that incident. Uh, in that workspace for you. Um, but like I mentioned, these notifications aren't workspace specific, um, so you can use them in the classic environment as well. Um, so that's all I have for my demo. I know we probably will have some questions about this, but I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Bragg. So I know he has some UI builder uh, information and a demo that he wants to share. Uh, we do have a few questions uh, I think would be good to kind of uh, go through. We had a couple of questions around um, 
or maybe just one around favorite grouping. Is there a default location for your favorite group if you don't specify one? No, it'll just go to top level. Um, so the what we changed on the it's called like the bookmarks table is the table that we had. So we're reusing reusing existing table. And all we did was add a group field to that. So it's a reference field. Um, so if you don't specify a location, it's just going to go into the top level. It's not going to have a group and there really is no default for it. It's just going to default to how the favorites worked beforehand. All right. And then we had another one around the notifications. Uh, is it admin only who can notify notifications or who can modify notifications? Yeah. So, I mean, those notification tables traditionally have been only visible and editable by admins. Um, I know, you know, different customers can go in and, and modify those ACLs, but out of the box, that table is limited to admins. All right. Uh, and then I think we had a question on the route field for notifications. Yeah. Did you, uh, I don't think I know that one. Um, so the route field, um, so that should be when I serve that interceptor, that's going to show what that route field is. So, but you know, that interceptor where I hit next experience, that's going to be the route. Um, there is the workspace route. Again, that was kind of a, an older notification type that we had out there. Um, so if you're setting up next experience notifications, you shouldn't have to specify the route. As soon as you go through that interceptor and click next experience, it'll auto-populate that for you. All right. Uh, I think we're good for, we have some more notifications questions, but it sounds like maybe we need to do a deeper dive into that on an academy. For uh, sure. I know there's product docs, but I know that those, we probably will have academy and community content out there on that one. All right. Um, yeah. And, and just a quick note, if we don't get to your question uh, in live on the air, we will try to answer it when we post this uh, to the community. All right. I think, yes, we're going to get into UI Builder here. Uh, and I'll talk through, I think we've got about four slides and then we'll do a demo because uh, there's actually a lot that's changed cosmetically to make UI Builder easier to use. Uh, and we'll kind of get into a lot of that. Uh, we're not really going to get into like changes to individual components and things like that because there are so many components um, and uh, but all of their documentation should be updated on the developer site. Um, so if there are changes, so I know we changed a lot of the way that uh, properties are displayed and grouped together in a lot of the components uh, to make them more consistent with each other. Uh, but uh, that's all available. All right. So let's jump in here. All right. So we're going to demo this a little bit, um, but we've added something that we're calling experience view. And so this is when you open an experience in UI Builder. Uh, the first page you get in UI Builder is the same, lists all your experiences. But once you get into one, uh, we've got kind of a new view uh, that shows all your pages and lets you edit settings without actually being dumped into a page right away. Uh, it gives you a lot more information about the structure of your experience uh, and lets you select specific variants, uh, look at the order and things like that. Uh, it's a really nice kind of quality of life improvement uh, for when you first get into UI Builder um, that kind of shows you just uh, the kind of overall view and architecture uh, of your experience. And we'll take a look at it uh, in just a minute. Uh, we also added a little page creation modal um, so that uh, it's a little easier uh, to know, you know, what it is that you're actually doing. Do you want to do you want a brand new page with a new URL path, or do you want to add a variant to the existing page you're on, or, or an existing uh, URL? Um, so we actually call those URL path screens, and then any of the pages that get rendered within that screen. Uh, is a variant. Uh, and so now you can kind of select which one of those you want to create uh, when you start, uh, when you create a page. Um, you know, one of the reasons for this was that uh, we got a lot of feedback that it was kind of confusing, you know, where to go to create a page in UI Builder in the first place. Uh, and then also, you know, people are kind of confused. Do I need a new variant? Do I need a brand new page? What is all of that? Uh, and so this makes it a little easier to do. And then there's also a process that you walk through uh, where it's asking you about conditions and audiences and page parameters and things like that. And we'll we'll kind of run through this a little bit. 
probably my favorite uh, thing that we did in this release is the duplicate component feature. Um, so now you can uh, you can duplicate a component or a set of components. So if you have a bunch of components in a container, you can duplicate that duplicate that container. Uh, and it will uh, give you a, another container with all the components in it, and it will keep all of the data and event bindings, uh, which is really nice. So if you've built out a fairly complex page where you maybe maybe you have like a stylized text and then some dynamic text and you do that like five times and then you need to do that again somewhere else, uh, it can be kind of a pain uh, to do that. And, you know, you might resort to other methods where you try to use a repeater and it gets a lot more complex. Um, so this just makes it a lot easier um, to, to build out your pages. Uh, we've also added some more right clicking into UI Builder. Uh, we'll take a look at that a little bit, but you can right click anywhere on the content tree uh, so you don't have to mouse over a component and see the little vertical ellipses or, or snowman icon is kind of my favorite name for that icon. Um, uh, yeah, so we've got that. And then multiple controller support. Um, so controllers and presets are functionality that we added in the Tokyo release. Um, controllers and presets allow component authors uh, to uh, add presets to their component, where when you drag a component onto the canvas, it will automatically add a data resource and uh, bind a lot of the outputs of the data resource to the properties of your component. Um, but one of the drawbacks in Tokyo was you can only have one controller per page, which for the most part was okay. Um, but we have, you know, some pages where you might want to display a record on the page and then you might want some, you know, a, a controller that goes with a related record also on the same page. Uh, and that was really, well, it was, it was not possible to do uh, in Tokyo. So we've added that capability uh, in Utah. It's, it may not be something that you run into a ton, uh, but it's something that, you know, we've run into enough that uh, that we needed to add it. All right, I think that's my last slide, is that right? Yes, it's demo time. All right, so let me share my screen. All right, so this is, uh, this is an experience uh, that I have called Fleet Vehicle Management. Uh, it's a workspace experience, and what I have done is just opened this experience in UI Builder. Uh, and so you can see that my my homepage for the experience has changed greatly. Uh, this is a new page that we've added. Uh, gives you a lot more information uh, about your experience. So oh, at the top, you can see what my URL path is, the scope. Um, which app shell I'm using, any roles that I that I need in order to access the experience. Uh, and then it lists all of my pages and variants. Uh, so one of the things I love about this is previous to this page, it was really difficult to see the orders of your variants. Uh, you actually had to click into the variant and get the settings of the variant. Um, so this is just at a glance, I can see all of my pages. I can see all of my variants. I can directly click into a variant, so it's going to save me at least one click. Um, I also get a little bit more information about the page where previous to Utah, all I had was a dropdown that looked something like this, uh, where I would just pick a page and I didn't really know anything else about it. Uh, now we've got uh, a little bit more info about it. Uh, what do we have at the bottom? I think I also have page collections. Uh, if I uh, have a page collection, um, I don't think I have any in this instance. Um, and then we can also go to the settings for the experience from here. Uh, so we've got, um, you know, we've got the title and URL path, I can update those things, branding and theming, navigation. So all of these things uh, that I could already edit, uh, but they're a little bit easier uh, to edit and see uh, from this experience view. All right, so what we're gonna do from here is I'm gonna create a page and we're gonna walk through this. So I can create a new page, I can add a variant to an existing page. Let's create a new page and it's gonna bring me this little wizard. Um, so again, I have uh, the page templates. Uh, I think we added the error page template and the theming preview template. 
maybe the error page is already there. I don't always remember what's in every release, uh, but we're going to create from scratch here. Uh, and so we have the page. So this is Test Academy page because I'm very creative. I'm going to continue um, and, you know, we can add parameters, uh, required parameters, optional parameters, looks good. Uh, I can name my variant uh, and then, you know, we can add audiences and conditions from here. So I'm going to create that. Uh, it's going to show me here, Test Academy page. Um, so that's there. Uh, but I think right now uh, we're going to hop into an existing page. And we'll see some of the some of the differences that we have in the page editor here. So this is a page where uh, we've got uh, information around a specific record. Uh, this is actually my old truck. Um, but some of the differences in uh, UI Builder just uh, cosmetically on this page, or I guess not cosmetically, but um, some of the things that look different, you can see, get that zoom thing out of the way. Uh, you can see that it's changed over here a little bit. Um, so I can open the menu from here, but we've changed a lot of the, if you remember, there were a lot of kind of random menus and uh, ellipses and all sorts of things to click on. And if you're anything like me, I generally had to click on two or three different things before I remembered what the right thing to click on was um, because there wasn't a lot of info around it. Um, so we've simplified that a lot. Uh, we have uh, all of our parameters are listed as uh, kind of data pill um, type things here. Uh, I can uh, edit those test values by clicking on this little, what is that, a, a beaker, a flask uh, icon. Uh, and, you know, edit the, uh, the uh, parameters and everything. Uh, we also added uh, this little uh, width. Uh, drop down. Uh, so this is a preview. And what this does is if you're on like a giant monitor, so I'm I'm way dialed in on my resolution here, but you know, I'm on a 4k uh, monitor. And so if you want to kind of preview what your page is going to look like for somebody looking at it on a laptop or something like that, uh, you can select one of these. So if I, if I do that. Um, and so uh, right, so this is 1024 right now, uh, and then I also have this little fit checkbox, and oh, that's this is what this does. Let me open my menus back up. So the fit checkbox uh, basically resizes it if I have less than that many pixels here. So if I uncheck that, I'm going to get actual size, and then if I check it, I get fit. So uh, you've got all sorts of things to play with. You also have fill, which is just going to fill it to uh, the, the width of your screen here. So uh, just some enhancements uh, to the preview right here. Uh, I can also uh, click into settings from here, uh, and I get all of my uh, you know, page settings all in one place here, uh, which is a nice little, uh, little enhancement. And then again, I can uh, switch back to uh, any of these pages and variants from this page. Uh, I can also go back to my experience uh, home page. And then if I want to go back to the UI Builder home, I click on the little icon up here. Uh, so what else do we have here? Uh, one of the other little changes that we've made is uh, if you open any of these panels, uh, we uh, are a little bit more descriptive of what those icons are, and it's a little easier to change between them uh, at the uh, at the top of the panel here. And then uh, let's do something fun and duplicate some components. Um, so you can see uh, in this repeater, I've got uh, these stylized text fields. Uh, and if I just right click on this, I can duplicate and they show up again here. And so if I click into one of those, let's see. Yep. So my data binding uh, is still there and uh, it is uh, it was duplicated with the component. So that's a little thing, uh, but it's a very nice little thing uh, that uh, is probably my favorite feature. Uh, we also added a, uh, you know, if you're on a Mac, it's Command-D. 
uh, keyboard shortcut for that one. Uh, so you can uh, use that keyboard shortcut. So I'm going to delete that. Uh, and then there's a really little thing that may not be super apparent, uh, but this little help icon, if I click on that, I get this new modal uh, that has lots of links to documentation and articles. Um, so uh, this is the modal we have. We've got lots of things on here. We will be expanding this uh, in future release, uh, future releases to do better and, and more uh, in product help. Uh, but this is kind of one of our, our first shots at it. Uh, I believe that is all of my demo. Uh, so we do have a couple of questions in here. Um, uh, so is there any UI builder training for Utah? Uh, I don't think the fundament fundamentals course has been updated for Utah yet. I can't remember whether they'll make GA for that, which would be mid-March, or if it'll wait a little after that. Um, but I would expect around March or April, the UI Builder Fundamentals course will be updated to Utah. Um, so that's, uh, I think that's going to happen. Uh, is the help form uh, context sensitive? I believe it is not context sensitive. I think this is just a static uh, page here. Uh, what else? Um, I see one. Uh... So the option to track page views, um, let's see. So the user experience analytics doesn't have the option to track the UI builder page. Um, that will probably have to circle back around on as far as user experience analytics and their features. That is a separate product team, but we could definitely get with them and post the answer to that in the community post. Um, so we'll, we'll take that one offline. And let's see, another one. So this one's going back to notifications. Um, so for Flow Designer, can you do notifications and see the same results without being an admin? Um, for Flow Designer, I'm not sure what options you have there as far as setting up provider content. I'll have to dig deeper into that. I can see kind of the use case, right? You have someone who has the Flow Designer roles. They want to set up those notifications. I don't know, you know, as far as slow designer and what options they have for those notifications. So that's another one we'll take offline. We'll explore that. Um, that is a use case that we can look into posting some community content on. Let's see, I think we have a, a few more here. Um, so let's see, we, we have more of, I guess, a, a comment on setting up properties like workspace experience properties, like the toolbar um, and the JSON structure um, and kind of just setting up your experience. Brad, do you want to answer this one? Yeah. So, so the question there, there are a lot of places currently where when, when someone asks, how do you do this? The answer is go edit some JSON somewhere. Uh, we know that's not the greatest user experience and we are, you know, working on making that better uh, where you don't have to go edit JSON uh, to change things, uh, you know, in in future releases. Uh, but it, it'll be a process, and you know, we'll kind of target things that are that are the most used things. So, you know, I I can't speak specifically to um, UX page properties that that'll be you know something that we're gonna you know change next release or anything like that. Uh, but it is absolutely something we're aware of. And we're passionate about. <laughs> we are. I I personally don't want anyone have to have to enter JSON uh, to make small configuration changes. Uh, For sure, we we have felt this ourselves. We do understand. <laughs> um, is there an updated version of the uh, command line interface in the pipeline? Uh, yes. Is there an updated version? Uh, so it is it is something that we want to do and are looking at. I don't think we have it. I'm not sure we have it locked in anywhere yet. Um, so that, that'll be something we'll have to kind of revisit uh, in the future. In less than 10 words, can you give the use case to someone who's never used UI Builder as to what you would use UI Builder for? In less than 10 words. In okay. less than 10 words. Uh, Currently, 
I probably can't do it in less than 10 words. Uh, currently, uh, you uh, the primary use case we see for UI Builder at the moment is uh, configuring and customizing our uh, out-of-the-box configurable workspaces. So right now, uh, that's probably service operations workspace for the ITSM products and CSM configurable workspaces for our CSM products. So those are the two main things that people are going to be using UI Builder to configure and customize. Uh, another use case that we see are um, experiences created from App Engine Studio. Uh, and you know they've got a, a new tool out uh, that kind of helps out with the, the first part of that as well called Workspace Builder. Um, and uh, but yeah, those are the main use cases at the moment. Uh, that also gives me the chance to say we strongly recommend uh, that you start from one of our default out of the box workspaces rather than trying to create your own, especially from scratch. Uh, there are some things that our app BU teams have built into those workspaces that you won't be able to replicate if you build out a workspace from scratch. Uh, we do ship more than 20 workspaces, uh, configurable workspaces, um, you know, with the with the platform at this point. Uh, and so there are, um, you know, there are a lot of options out there. Uh, we do have a knowledge article, not a knowledge article, a community article that lists all of the different workspaces that we're currently shipping and links out to each of their um, documentation. So I do think we have various questions in Q and A in the chat about like how to find resources. Um, so again, the COE and the product hub is going to be the best place to start. We're going to have short links there in just a second. So we've really worked on kind of guiding you through that COE. So like when you get right to the front page, we have quick start guides that are going to start walking you through what you need to do and where you need to look, you know, based upon where you're at in your journey, right? Like if you're just getting started with Next Experience or you're just getting started with Workspaces or UI Builder, we have quick start guides for that. And then we link out to different product documentation or we link out to different training. So that really is kind of our resource aggregation. And we, we've tried not to be a repository of links. We've tried to make it a guided experience. And we are working on that more um, as all of our products are maturing. Um, they've matured a lot since San Diego. So we are still working on that and making that guided experience better. If you're setting up like a specific workspace, let's say you're in service operations workspace or something, Going to the COE isn't going to be the best place for that. The best place for that is going to be to use the service operations guided setup or their product documentation. So kind of be aware of, of what you're wanting and, and what you're needing to do. Again, specific workspaces, go to their go to their guided setup, go to their documentation. Our, our documentation is going to be more of the concept of workspaces and what you should start looking at to get started. Um, but I did want to make that differentiation because we do have questions about workspaces and learning material and even um, dashboards. Um, so we did have a academy session on the new dashboards that are available in Next Experience. That academy session is on the COE. So if you want to learn more about those, um, check the academy page on the COE. Um, it is there for you. I think we have some more questions coming in as I was giving my spiel. So something important to note, just to go back to an earlier question, is that the UI Builder is not compatible with Service Portal or Service Catalog, and it does not replace dashboards. Um, I see one about adding Agent Workspace to the Workspace menu. I know in my demo I had Agent Workspace because I do a lot of stuff in my demo in instance. So Agent Workspace, and this is on the COE too. You can still use it with Next Experience turned on. Uh, we know we have a lot of customers who are still using Agent Workspace and are in the process of migrating over. Uh, it will open in a separate browser tab, so it will not open within Next Experience. There is a product doc um, out there underneath the Next Experience kind of category that shows you how to customize that workspace menu. So head over to that product doc to find that. Um, and the product docs are linked in the COE. Um. There are a couple of here, couple here. Um, well, where did that go? There was one I wanted to answer. Yeah, so uh, there's a really good question about, uh, you know, we mentioned you should start from an out-of-the-box workspace. 
Um, there's a great question about cloning uh, a workspace and starting from that. You can't clone a workspace. Um, so the one of the easy answers is, you know, don't do that. Uh, but, you know, we, we call these configurable workspaces because they are configurable. Um, so, you know, start from one of these workspaces. Uh, and, you know, if it, if it makes sense, if you need to cover a use case that's not covered in that workspace, you can absolutely create a new page that covers, you know, that that new use case within that workspace, right? Uh, you can also, if there's a page that you want to change something on, a lot of the pages that we ship are read only. Um, so you can clone that page into a variant and then reorder your variants. Uh, and you're not actually taking ownership of our, you know, the, the page that we ship there. I got a question about um, unsupported features in Next Experience. And this has been kind of an evolving topic because we did have kind of a list of things that weren't supported um, in San Diego. And all of our teams have been working really hard on getting things supported or showing migration paths. Um, so I did mention guided tours, right? Like in San Diego, we said that it just wasn't supported. And the guided tours team had to work and, and kind of get that functionality going. And they were they released a, a patch for San Diego patch nine, Tokyo patch four, and in Utah. So that's you know one example of something that wasn't supported. Now it is. Um, you know, connect chat. You know, we have a solution called Sidebar for that. We've linked that out in the product docs. So that is our our migration solution. So if you're using connect chat, migrate to Sidebar. Connect support, that product's been deprecated. Um, we talked about it in the Sidebar Academy session. Um, and there are some FAQs out in the community about Connect support and what to do and how to migrate to agent chat for that. Um, live feed, I do not have an answer for you. Uh, so if you are using live feed, it is currently not supported and we do not have it on our roadmap to support live feed. Um, does JavaScript console log, it's currently not supported. It is something that I love. I know Brad and Maria Gabriela love it as well. And we are pushing to get that supported. Um, so if you are an admin and you need to use it, you can, you know, find a solution to kind of toggle back to core UI if you need to, to do that troubleshooting, but it's definitely on our radar. We understand the importance of that. Uh, and then ATF is a big one too. So ATF is still supported in, in the classic environment. So if you have Next Experience turned on, you can still run all of your existing tests and create new ones. And we've even released functionality toward you can kind of test the unified navigation menus, but you can't run it on configurable workspaces right now or any other pages created in configured new UI builder. Um, that really is kind of a, an ATF team roadmap item. So once we find out more information about it, we'll definitely start advertising it. But I did kind of want to go through that, that laundry list of not supported features. Um, homepages and dashboards. Dashboards are supported in Next Experience. And to an extent, homepages, I'm not going to get too deep in that because we do have a larger effort to help deprecate um, homepages. That's our performance analytics team and reporting team. They have a tool out for that. So if you are using home pages, definitely start at least migrating into dashboards because um, we are going to focus more of our efforts on how do we get customers off responsive dashboards into next experience dashboards rather than going all the way back to home pages. So if you are in home pages, start migrating over to dashboards. That's the only uh, answer I have for you on that one. Uh, there's an interesting one. Maybe you know this, um, Marie Gabriella. Will portal themes ever be a part of theme builder generation? It is uh, currently a future planned feature, um, but we don't have a timeline for that, it seems. I did see that portal page preview as well. Very neat. I know it's on the roadmap for the team, safe harbor, <laughs> um, but you will see it. Just disregard it for now. All right. Um, any other Q and A we want to wrap up before I I do our closing slides here with our resources? A uh, couple of things. We had one question come in at the end around uh, asking if home pages are resource hogs. Uh, I would say they can be, uh, and there it's really easy to make them resource hogs, uh, and especially when people are creating their own home page, adding a hundred reports, and then sharing it with all of their friends. Uh, that can definitely affect instance performance. 
Um, so absolutely something we think about as we're, you know, building new tools that replace that. Uh, and then the last one, are there any recent component development examples? Uh, there's going to be some, a couple of cool uh, component development sessions at Knowledge this year. Uh, so Knowledge Plug, if you haven't uh, registered, uh, you should go take a look at that. I think it's knowledge.servicenow.com. Uh, I think that's a safe assumption. Uh, but uh, yeah, we will have uh, some more things uh, around the knowledge time frame. I'm just going to go ahead and just uh, share some resource slides that we have before we adjourn here. Go ahead and get my screen back up. Uh, if we didn't get to your question, again, I'm going to comb through all of these and we will post it in a comment um, underneath the community posts for this. So give us a couple days. And if we need to reach out to other teams, we will. Um, but so here are the, the Center of Excellence um, site that we spoke to with all the resources. Um, and it's nested underneath our community product hub. So if you're in the community and you click on product hubs, you'll see now platform. And then you'll see next experience. Um, so, you know, that, that's our new forum where you can ask all the next experience UI builder and workspace questions there. Um, so we have some short links here for you. If you, if you're, you know, your company is blocking short links. Uh, if you go to the community and you go to the next experience product hub, we have the COE link there for you on one of the main pages. And then, um, so we do have more live on ServiceNow events. Um, I think there is a link that we need to share, which I'll need to grab real quick. Um, but so all of our uh, academies are being posted here on live on ServiceNow. Um, that was a switch that we made at the beginning of the year. So if you are looking for other academies or other events, um, scan this QR code or once I can find the link and drop it in the chat, um, go there to do that. And then if you are looking for more Academy sessions that are platform related, um, we do have some short links here. So we have the Platform Academy, we have Analytics Academy, Mobile, Virtual Agent, and AI. So we have separated these topics out. Did want you to be aware of all those academies. Again, if you can't get to the short links um, on your company uh, browser, if you just go to the community and you go to the Now Platform Product Hub, um, there's a tile there for you where you can find all these. All right. Um, so that is our session today. I thank everyone for joining. Um, thank you, Brad and Maria Gabriella, for joining today. We will get this edited and posted on YouTube and on the community post with all the Q&A in just a few days. And be on the lookout for our next session. It's Wednesday, March 15th. We don't have a topic yet, but we will post it as soon as we get it. And it'll be at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, all. 